I've been asked so many times by various different people, what is a good car for their kid going through high school or college? Today we're going to answer those questions. Let's get started. Welcome back to the shop guys. I'm chilling in the shop, Barker Lounger. We're going to answer the question today of to buy, not to buy kids, college, or high school car. It could be a daily driver as well, but before we jump into that, let's hear a word from our sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by Manscaped.com, the global men's lifestyle brand that's disrupting the beard market. Manscaped is trusted by more than 8 million men worldwide for their trimmers, hygiene, and shower formations, and premium boxers. Wizard, what are you doing? Oh, I'm opening the Beard Hedger Pro Kit by Manscaped. It's new to their collection, it's the Essential Beard Styling Kit. The Beard Hedger Pro has everything you need to maintain your mane. As you've watched my videos, you've seen my beard evolve over the years. Being in and out of engine bays all day poses a challenge to keep it looking nice and flowing, my beard of knowledge. Also maintaining a nice shape when the beard is constantly growing can be a challenge. The Beard Hedger is a game changer. It has 20 cutting links and one guard. So no chasing a million guards around to get the right one. Plus the trimmer has a supercharged engine. Okay, not a supercharged engine, but a crazy powerful 7200 RPM motor that cuts hair in a single stroke with a titanium coated T-blade. No pulling or multiple passes. Plus beards can trap dirt and oils near the skin causing irritation and unpleasant smells. Oh. Manscaped Beard Shampoo gets rid of all that junk and their beard conditioner rehydrates the hair, leaving it soft and smelling great, something Mrs. Wizard really appreciates. But don't stop there, the kit also has beard oil and a free accessory pack to add those finishing touches. Go to manscaped.com today and get 20% off, plus free shipping when you use the promo code CARWIZARD at the checkout. The link is in the description below. That's 20% off plus free international shipping with promo code CARWIZARD at manscaped.com. Growing and maintaining a magnificent beard is possible thanks to the help from the Manscaped Beard Hedger Pro Kit. I need to get this thing home so I can get ready for my date night with Mrs. Wizard. Now back to which cars you should or should not buy. So that's definitely how I keep my beard in its top shape. You guys should go check that out. It is definitely worth it. Now back to high school, college cars for kids. We're gonna break this into different segments by the type of vehicle. And we're gonna have one that you should buy, one that you should run away from. Very simple, very easy. We're gonna start off with subcompacts, which is the really small car. Sometimes people wanna buy their kid the really tiny car for better fuel economy or whatnot. In the subcompact category, the one that you should buy is 2005 to 2013 Toyota Yaris hatchback. These easily get 30 miles per gallon in the city, 36 or seven on the highway. And the key thing there is 30 in the city. So if your kid's going to college three miles from home, they're probably not gonna be on the highway much they're still going to get 30 miles per gallon in the city. That's really, really pretty good. Now, we're not going to recommend any hybrids or anything because your kid's going through school. The last thing you want to worry about is hybrid battery failures and things like that could cost thousands of dollars. So we're not going to recommend hybrids for a high school college car. These are very cute cars. I see them a lot and I think that is a really neat looking car. They did that well. It's reliable. You can get these for about four or $5,000, which are in really good shape. And they come in manual or automatic, whichever is the preference. But they really are a good car. They save a lot of fuel and they're reliable. Definitely a good subcompact car. Another one not to buy is any of the smart cars, smart for two, any of those cars like that. It's easy to think it's so small it should get super mileage, but they really don't. Not much better than the Yaris I just recommended. And every time I see these on the highways, I just think if that car gets smashed in between a semi and a big truck or something like in a rear end accident, your loved one may not make it through that accident. I know that they may have a high safety rating or people claim that they do. I just don't trust it. I just look at it as a tin can on four wheels and you just put your child in it 
I honestly think if a semi truck hit it hard enough, it would actually go airborne, go flying in the air. It's so light and so small. It just doesn't look like a good idea. The gas mileage again, it's in the 40, low 40s. You would think it's so small, it should be in the 50s. It's not. It's not that great. Another issue not to get the smart car is that no one wants to work on them. You buy one for your kid, they've had it for three months, something happens, it breaks down, and you go to four different shops and they all say, nope, 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 and nope, we won't touch your car. We've worked on several smart cars in the shop. Underneath is basically a Mercedes Benz. A lot of the parts in there are Mercedes electronics and things. And the same thing is always said. I've been to three shops and all three said, hell no, we're not touching your smart car. So keep that in mind. That's probably why you don't want one because your kid's gonna be like, when is my car fixed, dad or mom or whoever? And you're gonna be like, I can't find anyone to work on it. So don't get that one. Now we're gonna to move to the compact car section and the one to buy is 2006 to 2011 Honda Civic. I think these are very stylish cars. I think they look great. They really knocked it out of the park as far as being a small, cheap car that actually looks really cool. They're comfortable. You get 25 in the city, 35 in the highway, maybe a little more. They're very, very reliable. You see them all over the place. They're, they're usually not beat up too bad and they just keep going and going and going. I don't see a lot of them in the shop because they just don't break that much. So fairly decent gas mileage. It's got a lot more room than a subcompact. Very reliable. And you can get them for 35 to 5,500. They're not gonna break the bank because there's a lot of them. So there's no huge demand for it as far as supply and demand being an issue. So that's definitely one to buy. The one not to buy is any German car with over 100,000 miles. VW Jetta, a BMW 325, a Jag X-Type. I know your kid really wants one of these cars. They want to look cool in front of their friends, but you are going to go bankrupt keeping it running. It doesn't matter which brand you choose. They will all be breaking down all the dang time. There'll be oil leaks on your driveway. There'll be things that the power windows don't work, electrical problems, engine transmission issues. And when you take it to the shop, if you can find a shop to work on them, Whatever you think it's going to cost to fix a Ford Fusion, it's going to be triple that for your BMW. Very, very expensive to fix and always, always broken. Also with these German cars, again, it doesn't matter which brand you choose, unless you get into diesels. But gasoline, three to $5,000 range cars, they're not going to get good gas mileage. You're not going to get a BMW that gets 45 miles per gallon with a basic gas engine or a Mercedes or a Jag. They're just, they're not going to do that. The only reason why your kid's pushing that is for looks. They want to have an image. They want to have a presence. But if you're the one paying for the repairs, you make the decision and you say, hell no, you're not getting one of those. We're getting you a Toyota. So on to the next segment. The next segment we're going to move to is a small SUV segment, and the one to buy is 2001 to 2007 Ford Escape. Yes, you heard that right. I didn't say a Toyota or a Honda. A Ford Escape. These things are bulletproof. There's literally millions of them on the road, and they're all still on the road, still going, unless they've been beat to hell and treated really badly. But you can go in any city in America, small or large, and come to any intersection, you probably will see a Ford Escape. They're everywhere, and for a reason. You can get a good one for three to 5,000, easily 25, 30 miles per gallon on the highway, probably a little less in town, but fairly decent gas mileage, lots of room to haul stuff. You could put the back seats down if they got lots of Items they want to move to a dorm or something like that. They're going to college. They can totally pack it in the back and still get pretty good gas mileage. The Ford Escapes are very reliable. I haven't seen a whole lot of those in the shop and any other shop that I've worked in. There's just not a lot of those that break a lot. And it's a Ford, which means any corner mechanic that's halfway decent should be able to work on it. 
They're not going to turn it away like the smart car and say, oh, hell no. They're probably going to say, Ford Escape? Yeah, sure, bring that in. We'll work on it. So definitely one you should buy. The next one you should not buy is any of the Audi Q5s or Q3s with the 2.0 TSI or TFSI engine. I know the Q3s are going to be very expensive. They're fairly new. The Q5s, you can get them for five to 10,000 range. Don't do it, guys. You guys have seen the Audi catastrophe we've had in the shop. Actually, Danielson, if you watch his channel, has been working on one, getting it fixed up. There's a reason why I go to my World Pack account and look up cylinder heads for an Audi Q5 2.0. They don't have two or three in stock. They have 93 heads in stock. There's a reason for that. They're garbage. So I know your kids say, Dad, Mom, whoever, I want an Audi. That'd be so cool. No. They're not that good on gas. And they're, they're going to leak oil. They're always leaking oil somewhere. And they're going to break. Guaranteed it's going to break. Everything along the line of one of those Q5s or Q3s is going to be expense that's not necessary to get your kid through school. So don't do it. Now, by the time we get to the end of this video, your kids are going to hate me. I know they will, but I'm talking logic. I'm talking sense here. What is sensible? You need to get your kid through school. They need reliable transportation that's good on gas, that doesn't break the bank, and it's safe to drive. Now, your kid's going to say, but Dad, I want a Z28 Camaro. No. They say, when you finish college, kid, go buy whatever you want. But when I'm paying the bill, you're going to get a Toyota or a Honda. Deal with it. Yeah, your kids are going to hate me, but that's okay. I'm just telling you the truth. The next category we're going to talk about is small pickups. No, I'm not talking about a 3500 Dually Cummins. I'm talking about a small pickup truck. Maybe your kids got a job when they're not in school. Maybe they're hauling stuff around or they need to haul stuff around. They go play gigs, they play guitar or something like that. They need to haul stuff. They don't need a giant pickup, just a small one. The one to buy is 98 and newer Ford Ranger. Now, obviously, I'm not talking about the brand new 2022-23 Ford Rangers. I'm not talking about a $55,000 truck for your kid. I'm talking about, you guys know, 99, 2004, 5, 6, 7, in that range. These are super ultra reliable. The parts are plentiful. You can get a nice one for three dollars to $5,000. They can actually pull pretty well. Obviously, they're not going to pull 10,000 pounds, but they could even pull a small trailer with a small load, they can haul things around and get decent gas mileage, about 20 in the city, 27, 28 on the highway if you get a four cylinder. And I've seen a lot of these with 250, 300,000 miles on them. And these trucks are everywhere. Just like I just mentioned a minute ago with the Ford Escapes, you can go to any city in America, there's Ford Rangers everywhere. The local mechanic is going to work on it. The parts aren't going to break the bank. They last a long time. They're fairly decent on gas. It's definitely the small pickup to buy. So the one not to buy is 2003 to 2006 Subaru Baja. Now I know a lot of people think these are cool and it is a pickup truck. It has, it's like a Subaru with a bed. You think, oh, I'll get that. It'll be like a pickup truck, but they'll have all wheel drive and good gas mileage. It'll still haul stuff. No, this is the era where Subaru is blowing head gaskets left and right. Very likely the one you're looking at has had or is going to blow its head gaskets. This applies to the cars of that era as well, but definitely the Baja. I know a lot of people have looked at pickup trucks and there is love for the Baja. It's a cool idea. It's, it's like, this is cool. I could have a pickup and look really cool too. It's sporty, it's fun, but it's a bad idea as well. It's very likely going to break. And the ones I've ever worked on or ever seen, for some reason, I don't know why, but they're always beat to hell. I mean, they run them through the ringer. There's things broken. This is broke. The windows are broke. It's leaking. It's running on three cylinders. It's, there's not very many nice ones of those left. So it's definitely not worth it. So stay away from those. Oh, and also don't buy the Ford 3-valve. 5.4 Triton. Oh, that's not a small truck, but just just stay away from those forever. Always. Never buy one of those. Okay, so your kid's doing super good in school. They're like 
4.0 grade average. They're really, really knocking it out of the park. And you're like, I know you want a sporty car and I'm gonna reward you with one. Don't get one with a supercharger or a V8 or anything crazy. What you should buy is 2005 to 2010 V6 Mustang, a Ford Mustang. These have plenty of power to be fun. You can zip around and have a lot of fun. They can get around 17 to 20 in the city, 25 or more on the highway. And they're dead reliable. These have the four liter V6 in them, bulletproof engine. The automatic or the manual, whichever one you choose, are also, they're good transmissions. To me, this era of Ford Mustang is the best styling ever. Ever since the Mustang in the 60s all the way till now, that era is the best looking Mustang ever created. They really got everything right with this one. The proportions, the headlights, the styling, the body, everything. We had one for a while in 06. It was a V6, a manual, and it had zero trouble. It was a very, very good vehicle. So it looks cool. It's fairly fast. It's good on gas. They are safe. They're reliable, but there's not enough power that they're going to wrap themselves around a telephone pole and get injured. And maybe you having a kid with this really good student could get a discount on your insurance and get a better rate. But regardless, the V6 Mustang is not going to be as high as a GT on insurance rates as well. So there's savings there as well. And a sporty car not to buy. Any of those cars, the V8, a Camaro, a Mustang, a Charger, a challenge, I don't care what it is. A kid that's focusing on high school, college, trying to get through school and get that behind them, needs to be focusing on school and not worried about 450 horsepower. They don't need 450 horsepower. No matter what your kid tells you, no, they don't need it. This kind of power mixed with that age group, the younger children, 16, 17, 18, 19, that range, it's very likely they're gonna get hurt. And even if your child doesn't do the damage or damage their vehicle, they're probably gonna let a friend drive it and they're gonna wrap it around a telephone pole. That's really not what they need to be doing right now. They need to be focusing on getting through school. The V8, Camaro, Mustang, whatever, is gonna eat gas like there's no tomorrow. Every time you turn around, your kid's gonna be like, dad, mom, whoever, I need gas money. I'm out of gas again. They're gonna be like, I just put gas in it two days ago. Yeah, I know, I went on a town and hauling ass all across all the city. I ate up all my gas. I need more. It's gonna go fast in one of those cars. What teenage kid is going to resist putting the pedal to the metal and that much power? They're gonna be full throttle all the time, so keep that in mind. Insurance is gonna be way higher, and cost to repair is gonna be way higher as well. There's more spark plugs, more coils, more parts. It's a bigger engine. It's gonna cost more, so keep that in mind. Don't do it. So some of the cars we've actually gotten our kids while they're in school, it's Honda Element, Toyota Camry, an Acura MDX, actually a Cadillac DeVille, like an 01 or 02. They're actually decent on gas and they're big, which makes them a lot safer. A Toyota RAV4. These are all reliable cars, are fairly reliable. I made the Cadillac reliable by doing the North Star head studs. We have two kids and they've gone through several different cars. We did a lot of wheeling and dealing and they get tired of this car. Maybe they want to get this car. But all in all, they were always cars that were safe, decent on gas and easy to work on. I never got anything that was hard to work on. There's gonna be so much power that they could get hurt or something. So to wrap it up, there's one vehicle you should never buy under any circumstance, no matter who's buying it, is a BMW. Run. Do not buy BMWs. They are all trash. Let me underline that again. All trash. Do not buy one. So if you're curious what kind of tools we use in the shop to fix cars, check my Amazon affiliates link in the description below. We get a small cut and we really appreciate it. Make sure to hit the subscribe button because there's bus videos and Viper videos coming and all kinds of videos coming. Thanks for watching. See you later. Thank you.